resolvent operator. So what is a resolvent operator? The function x from rho of x to e, which is defined as x of lambda, which is equal to x minus lambda e raised to power minus 1. It means inverse of x minus lambda e. Similarly, in case of operator r lambda t, which is equal to t minus lambda e raised to power minus 1. Now, this lambda belongs to rho, rho of x. What is rho of x? Rho of x is a resolvent. So, by definition of a resolvent, x minus lambda e is invertible. And similarly, by definition of a resolvent in operator, T minus lambda E is invertible. So that inverse is defined in term of function, which is called a resolvent operator. <coughs> now, first uh, theorem is show that X lambda means the resolvent operator is analytic function in rho of X. So it means it is differentiable at every point and it's and in its neighborhood. Let A be a complex Banach algebra. First step. If a, a be a complex Banach algebra, we take x vector belongs to A. Now our definition of a row of x, it is a set of all lambda belongs to C such that x minus lambda e inverse exists or x minus lambda e is regular or x minus lambda e is invertible. The resolvent operator that we already defined that is written in equation number 2. What is our purpose? Our purpose is to show that x lambda is an analytic function. In order to prove that x lambda is analytic function, so we take 2 lambda 1 and lambda 2 belongs to rho of x, then by definition, x minus lambda 1 e and x minus lambda 2 e are regular. If this is a regular, then operator x lambda 1 and x lambda 2, this exists. If this operator exists, then by definition, x lambda 1 inverse into x lambda 2. So this inverse is written in this form, x minus lambda 1 e into x of lambda 2. Now this can be arranged in term of lambda 2 as x minus lambda 2 e plus lambda 2 e minus lambda 1 e and into x into lambda 2. Now multiply by scalar multiplication by x lambda 2. So this is equal to x minus lambda 2 e x lambda 2 plus lambda 2 minus lambda 1 into x of lambda 2. Now what is this? It is a inverse of x of lambda 2 operator into x of lambda 2. So this product is identity. And this term, second term, this is lambda 2 minus lambda 1 into x of lambda 2. And this equation, if we multiply by x of lambda 1 on both sides, so this left hand side will become x of lambda 2, which is equal to x of lambda 1 plus lambda 2 minus lambda 1 into x of lambda 1 into x of lambda 2. This equation, equation number 3, is also called a resolvent equation. Sometimes the independent uh, question may be asked to find the resolvent equation or to solve the resolvent equations. After that, from this resolvent equation, this can be written in this form x of lambda 2 minus x of lambda 1 over lambda 2 minus lambda 1 which is equal to x of lambda 1 into x of lambda 2. Now taking limit lambda 2 approaches to lambda 1 
on both sides so we get this is a this term left hand side and right hand side x lambda 1 and rectangle limit lambda 2 approaches to lambda 1 x of lambda 2 so this term is again become x of lambda 1 now this is a x lambda 1 and sare the whole square now what is this it is a derivative of x with the derivative of x with respect to lambda 1 now this is equation number 1 it means x dash lambda 1 which is equal to x lambda 1 whole square so right hand side exists it means the derivative of this function exists at every point in row of x it means x of lambda is a analytic function it is a analytic function now again prove that the resolvent equation x of lambda 2 minus x of lambda 1 which is equal to lambda 2 minus lambda 1 into x of lambda 1 into x of lambda 2 that we already proved in the previous result the previous theorem so on similar pattern we can prove the resolvent equation next theorem is let a be a complex Banach algebra with identity e then for each x belongs to A, the spectrum, which is sigma of x, is compact and spectral radius r sigma of x is less than equal to norm of x. Now, in order to prove this result, first remember the definition of spectral radius. We know that this is a definition of spectral radius, that is sigma. Sigma means singular, sigma means uh, spectrum, right? And it consisting all lambda belongs to C such that x minus lambda is singular. Now, our claim is absolute value of lambda less than equal to norm of x for every lambda belongs to sigma of x. So, what is our purpose? My purpose is to prove that sigma x is compact. So, our aim is to prove that it is closed and bounded. In order to prove it is a bounded, so our purpose is to show that modulus absolute value of lambda less than equal to norm of x for every lambda belongs to sigma of x. So, on contrary, on contrary, we take absolute value of lambda greater than norm of x. It means lambda inverse x less than 1, right? If this is less than 1, then by previous result, E minus lambda inverse x is invertible. If it is invertible, if we multiply by some scalar minus lambda on both sides that is again invertible if again invertible so it means this can be written as x minus lambda e is invertible so it means it is irregular if it is irregular then it means lambda belongs to rho of x it means lambda belongs to c minus sigma of x it means uh, it means lambda belongs to complement of sigma x. So, if lambda belongs to complement of sigma x, it is possible if it satisfies this condition. By using this condition, lambda belongs to complement of sigma x. It means lambda belongs to sigma x if it satisfies this condition. So, absolute value of lambda less than equal to norm of x for every lambda belongs to sigma x. So, this means this set is less than equal to norm of x. What is this set? This set is a sigma x. So, supremum of absolute value of lambda is again less than equal to norm x. If this value is less than equal to norm x, 
So R sigma of X is less than or equal to norm of X. It means this sigma X is bounded and also it satisfies this condition R sigma X less than or equal to norm X. So now it proves two result. One result sigma X is bounded and second is R sigma X less than or equal to norm of X. Now, in order to prove compact, our second purpose is sigma x is closed. So, in order to prove closed, our aim is to prove rho of x is an open set. Means its complement is an open set. So, we take lambda 0 belongs to rho of x. It means x minus lambda 0 e is invertible. Yeah, it is a regular. If it is a regular, then we know that a regular element belongs to G because G is set of all invertible. Now, what is G? G is open set. So, if G is open set, then neighborhood of Y is contained in G. So, this is in equation number one. Now, we define a mapping, the mapping which is from lambda to X minus lambda I. This is a continuous mapping. So, if it is a continuous mapping, then we use the result of continuity for given epsilon greater than 0. There exists delta greater than 0 such that it satisfies this condition. Now, substitute the value of phi lambda and phi lambda dot, which is x minus lambda e minus x minus lambda naught e. So, what is this? This is basically this is a lambda minus lambda naught. So it is the same as this values. This is the same as this value. Now from this result, what we conclude, if it satisfies this condition, then phi of lambda belongs to, phi of lambda belongs to, phi of lambda belongs to neighborhood of epsilon x minus lambda naught e. Right now, again, lambda belongs to neighborhood of lambda naught. It implies x minus lambda e belongs to neighborhood of y, which is a part of G by equation number one. If this belongs to, if this belongs to neighborhood of y, and that is a part of G that it means x minus lambda is invertible. If x minus lambda e is invertible, then lambda belongs to rho of x by definition. So it implies neighborhood of lambda naught is a part of rho of x. So rho of x is a open set. Now, rho of x is open set. It implies sigma x is closed set. Now, if sigma x is closed and bounded, then sigma x is compact, so which proves the result. And thank you very much.